Good morning, my name is Raheel Chowdhury. This is Chris Guerra and Kevin Alvarez. Today we'll be talking to you about the IDG servicing program. So UTC Aerospace Systems in Miramar, Florida currently has a problem. Uh, their problem is that when they're servicing the IDGs, they're getting aerated oil into it, and it can fail at initial startup. So our problem, uh, first of all, what is an IDG? An IDG is an integrated drive generator, and what it basically does is it takes variable mechanical energy from the engine, and it turns it into constant frequency AC power for the aircraft. So our project will be to build a servicing car, over just a little yeah. bit. Thank you. The servicing cart, and uh, which will be able to uh, service over 200 IDGs a month, uh, be quick and efficient, as well as ergonomically friendly and mobile. So the motivation for this project is to reduce IDG failures and increase overall aircraft safety. We're going to do this by improving the overall IDG servicing procedure. Now, as mentioned before, aeration is one of the causes of the failures in IDGs. And aeration is when air seeps into the system through leaks in the fittings and seals or through the oil itself. Aeration can cause multiple kind of, uh, multiple damage, can cause damage, basically through fluid degradation, cavitation, when there's a pressure difference in the inlet of the pump which causes a shock, and that shock removes material from the veins of the pump. Loose, loss of lubrication, when the moving parts aren't lubricated anymore and they're subject to stress and fatigue. The hammer effect when Moving parts are in contact with each other and create a hammering sound, as well as overheating and burning of seals. In our research, we found a couple ways that we can reduce or prevent aeration in the system. The two methods we're going to focus the most on is using a proper sized, uh, an adequate sized reservoir. If a reservoir is too small, the suction from the pump is going to cause a lot of turbulence in the system. Also, we need to use a proper filtration system to remove any contaminants. If there are contaminants present in the oil, air bubbles will form much faster. So we went out into the market and looked at what was already available for these companies. Uh, we found this one from Tron Air, which is an actual hand pump uh, cart, and it costs about $6,000. Uh, we also got a quote from Hydraulics International, which has done work for uh, UTC in uh, Miramar uh, before, and they, charged us, they, they quoted us at around $8,000 for that cart. So uh, basically, the, the most important uh, standard that we had to follow was ATA Chapter 24. Chapter 24 of the ATA codes uh, handles all of electric power for the aircraft. Uh, that's where we find our component maintenance manuals as well as our, our standard practice manuals and our air, aircraft maintenance manuals. Uh, UTC Aerospace Systems in Miramar is certified under ISO 9001, so we have to follow those procedures as well as AS 9110. Uh, they're an OSHA BPP site, which is a volunteer protection program, and uh, all of the technical data that we received uh, had to go through ITAR and EAR 22 CFR 1. Uh, so, like I said before, Chapter 24 is the most important one. That's where we're going to get all our, our specifics on how to uh, properly service the, the cart, uh, as well as all our gauges. Our gauges need to be calibrated every year. So, uh, th they need to have an NIST calibration uh, certificate when they first come in. Uh, also, the oil that we're using has to match the, the oil that is being used currently by, um, by Utah's Miramar, which is the MIL PRF 23699 are also known as Eastman Turbo Oil 2380. And uh, the standards for that oil uh, under ASTM are for uh, viscosity, density, and the foaming characteristics of that oil. Uh, our filtration system will also have to pass a test, which is uh, standardized by ISO 68889. So the design specifications for this project are to supply four to five quarts of deaerated oil into the IDG in less than a minute at under 35 PSI. It has to be compatible with Eastman Turbo Oil 2380, as well as be mobile, ergonomic, and cost effective. So for our first design, we went with something similar to what's already in the market, a hand truck based design, which has the basic necessities of a reservoir, filtration system, pump, and a hose reel. For our second design, we went with something more ergonomical, a hand cart. It has the basic necessities as well, the reservoir, the filtration system, filtration system pump, hose reel, and a handy gauge pod. So for the design we're going with, we're going to go with design two, which is a hand cart. We're going to use a 12 gauge steel hand cart, a 10 gallon reservoir, uh, the Sandpiper TS3 PP diaphragm pump, as well as a pressure gauge and totalizer to measure how much oil has gone into the system, as well as at what pressure. The key point here is the custom filtration system that we're going to be making for this cart. It's going to use the filter that's already in the IDG, as a filtration system for 
uh, decontaminating the oil as well as deaerating it. Now we conducted a static analysis on the cart based off of the load of a full tank of oil in, at the bottom level and we yielded a stress of 5,000 psi, 5,900 psi when the yield strength is of steel, of 12 gauge steel is 29,000. So we're far from our cart failing. Now for our prototyping plan, we're going to have all our fittings and lines made by a third party company that UTC has done business with in, in the past, as well as any machine work or welding that is necessary, especially for our custom filtration system, will be done in-house at UTC. As far as testing goes, we're going to be testing the aeration content of the oil after the test stand and after the cart to see have a comparison, as well as test it on an IDG for failures. So for global design, um, we're kind of stuck within the English system of units since we're going to be working in the aerospace industry here in the United States. However, we can incorporate the metric system in a couple ways. Um, specifically in our gauge and totalizer, we can have both units side by side as shown here. Also our filter for maintenance is going to have a little housing that can get removed with a little hand wrench. So we can modify that design to use like a standard metric wrench, like say 17 millimeters for example, or English system, whatever is easiest for that current application. Most importantly, we're going to use a user's manual in French and Chinese. That's because UTC has facilities in France, China, and Singapore that also service IDGs internationally. So those three facilities, France, China, and Singapore, all fall under the IATA, or International Air Transport Association. So it's important for us to try to follow their um, standards as close as possible. Specifically, their China and North Asia region have a strict pollution policy. And we'll be able to comply with them because our cart is going to use an air-driven pump, which is very clean and pollution-free. Along with the environment, our cart is pollution-free. However, we're working with hydraulic oil, so it's important to prevent and contain any spills. We're going to have a properly sealed reservoir and uh, proper quick disconnect fittings that will limit any spills. In the event of a spill, however, UTC has some contingency plans in place that we will follow. So uh, doing this project, uh, you know, it was, it was an eye-opener. Taking something from concept to actual prototype is very difficult. And it's a very long process. And uh, we had to learn a lot of standards, and like I said before. But really, is uh, to get it into production, you have to follow a lot of internal procedures. Uh, UTC uses the ACE operating program, which is similar to Six Sigma. Uh, and all of these have to be, uh, they, ha they have to go through a passport process where we can actually get this card into service. So, like I said before, our cost analysis, we want to get under that uh, 6,000 mark. So, uh, we've got some quotes for different uh, gauges and reservoirs and stuff like that. And uh, we're, we're approximating that uh, we're going to spend less than $2,500. Um, like I said before, safety is our number one concern, not only for the IDG, but for the operator using it. Uh, we want to know, we want to make sure that when you're using this car, you're not going to get hurt. Uh, making, making sure that it's cost effective for the company to build it, as well as in a timely manner to do this process. Uh, communication was key, not only between us, but between the company and potential external customers. So here's our timeline breakdown. Uh, we're going to try to finish up all our simulations and analysis through the end of the summer. After that's completed, we're going to go ahead and start a prototyping and test on our cart, and we plan to finish by the end of the year. Here's a breakdown of responsibilities. A lot of teamwork was involved in this project. Orange did its major roles, while blue is supporting roles. So going forward, the most important thing for us to complete is the flow analysis. It's very dependent upon that our project. Um, we can only do that once we have specified and finalized our pipe fittings, pipe material properties, trying to characterize what our filtration is going to do to the system. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and prototype and develop a testing method. Our testing method is going to go along the lines of measuring um, density versus um, volume to see how much air content is within our um, sample. And after we test, we, are, we have to follow UTC's internal procedures to get it implemented in their facility. Here's our poster. Any questions? Thank you for the presentation. Um, if you have any questions, comments to the team, please. Advisory board members. Uh, uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, a couple questions. One being, how are you going to connect this system to the engine that you're, that you're um, supplying the, the hydraulic fluid to without causing cavitation? 
Okay, so uh, UTC Aerospace Systems, it only, it's a repair station in Miramar, and we don't actually connect the IDG to the engine or the gearbox itself. We only work on the actual IDG. So the most important part about the area and the oil is for initial startup. So the initial startup is where we've seen some failures, especially on the 737 line, and uh, that's where we, we have to prevent the aeration of initial startup. Okay. One question on your design. Um, you're not taking advantage of gravity in any way. Um, and with, with the system, basically, you're pumping out of a tank and you're pumping up from that station. If that tank was up on top and you, were, you could potentially use gravity feed, you might, you, you might have a, a, a less turbulent opportunity. Yeah. Okay, that's one question. Um, spill proof. What are, what are you doing that safeguards to ensure that the system doesn't put oil on the floor? Yeah, so like uh, I stated before, we are going to use quick disconnect fittings. Uh, so these units already have uh, quick disconnect fitting uh, attached to the actual IDG. And uh, our fluid lines or fittings will also have the, the female side of the, of the quick disconnect. So yeah, that's what we're planning on doing. And who gets the honor to write the manual in Chinese? Uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna need some help. So definitely, um, uh, the good thing about uh, UTC is that we're a very open company, and we steal relentlessly. And uh, what we do is that yes, between our sites, we steal relentlessly. So what we do is that we, I can actually call them up, and I can say, hey, can you do this for me? And and if they have the time and the ability, they will. Okay, and this is all reused oil. Uh, no, it will, for initial startup, we're going to be trying to use uh, new oil, uh, but, but yeah, definitely we're, we're, there's some other plans in the company to reuse the oil, but that's, that's something that we're not taking into account. So, so the comment about particles in fluid, in yeah. oil, there should be no particles. Theoretically, we should. We don't know. So if, if you use this reservoir for many years, maybe there's something And the filtration there. system is what you're using to make to eliminate the bubbles? Yes. And that, along with a, a smaller beaker pump, their current procedure uses a very powerful pump yes. to test in, which is, it's, it's too strong for the, you know, 35 PSI steady digits. So our small pump is gonna kind of replace the humongous uh, powerful test in, so that should eliminate a lot of this air bubbles within itself. Thank you. Yes. Any concerns for uh, cooling or heating issues that you have already accounted for for your now first uh, simulation? No, we have not. Uh, right. Anything that spikes up in interest right there? Yes. Yeah. Pressuring it at 35 PSI, 10 gallons, and so forth? Yeah, so that's something that we definitely have to look into. Um, for a, the such a small amount, uh, we're going to see some temperature difference, but uh, hopefully it will be. Yeah, so that's a good one. Thank you. Why did you take ISO 16889 for your filtration system? So that's actually a procedure that, that, that we found for uh, the filtration system that actually tests uh, how efficient a filtration system is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So why? Does it meet your requirements, that ISO? Yeah, so. Basically, the ISO was for filtration systems with oil-based filtration systems. We were looking into basically decontaminating the area there weren't actual tests on deaeration for filtration system. It was decontamination. So that was the only one in the ISO list that had decontamination and for an oil-based system in the hydraulic system, like the hydraulic system. So it does fit our actual needs, but not all our needs. So. And also, this is a comment. Since you guys are doing this for a company, documentation has to be really good. So you can go ahead and give this to them and they know what you have done every single step of the way. Thank you. Um, kind of as a follow-up to the ISO standard, um, as a word of warning, you may find that there's a reason why there's not an ISO standard on aeration. Um, you may find that you may need to consider alternative options than a filter to help with that. Yeah, we, we found some uh, some other methods of prevention. We think uh, just downsizing the pump dramatically and just you know, see well, yeah, UTC requires us to filter the oil, so um, 
you know, once we complete the flow analysis, if, if we find that it's going to be aerated, we can adjust our design or enhance it. Thank you. All right, thank you very much.